Hello guys, this is Shweb Yaakob. In today's session, we are going to cover five different yields. Holy period yield, effective annual yield, bond equivalent yield, money market yield, and bank discount yield. These all the yields use different conventions. Some of these yield uses the 360 days convention. Some of the yields will use 365 convention. Some of the yields using the simple interest rate convention and some of the yields are using the compounding convention. And in some yields, we take a base of investment value or the opening market value. And in some of the yields, we will take base as a face value or the ending value. So let's learn it one by one. Number one is holding period yield. Holding period yield, it actually tells you that how much you earn in any given period. So its formula will be closing market value minus opening market value plus any dividend if you got divided by the opening market value. So the closing minus opening plus if there is any other inflow, divided by the opening market value that is the holding period yield. Holding period yield does not depend on any period. Holding period yield can be of 90 days, can be of 120 days, can be of 180 days. So for example, we are investing in a in a T-bill having a market value of 960 and par value is or the face value is thousand and days are for example 120 so holding period will be this yield will be closing market value minus opening market value and there is no dividend or interest during that period so it will be 40 divided by 960 it is irrespective of any period so 40 divided by 960 into 100 that is 4.1667 so that is the holding period yield and obviously this period is of 120 days so irrespective of the days if you calculate that yield that is called the holding period yield now the next one is effective annual yield so if we calculate the effective annual yield Effective annual yield is the annualized rate of the holding period yield and it does cover the compounding. It considers 365 days convention. It considers the compounding effect. So its formula will be 1 plus holding period yield raised to power 365 we have to analyze that return over n and here in our example n is 120 minus 1 that is equal to the effective annual yield so it is 1.041667 raised to power 365 over 120 minus 1 so how to solve this on the calculator 1.041667 raised to power this is yx bracket start 365 over 120 bracket close is equal to minus 1 this will be equal to 13.22 percent that is 13.22 percent that's how you will calculate the effective annual yield. There is another way to calculate this instead of using this formula. That is, 
using this time value of money function. Assume the investment value is 100. This must be a negative number. PMT is 0. I by is 4.1667 and N is 120 days in a year. How many 120 days in a year? That is 365 over 120. Enter and compute the FV. 113.22. So on the investment of 100, you have earned 113.22, that is equal to 13.22%. So that's how you can calculate the effective annual yield. So effective annual yield considers a 365 days convention, and in effective annual yield, you will take the compounding effect. In holding period yield, holding period yield does not consider any days period. If you're holding for 20 days, it will calculate for the 20 days period. If you're holding for 120 days, it will calculate for the 120 days period. So holding period yield is not annualized figure. Effective annual rate is an annualized figure. Next is bond equivalent yield. That is, first of all, you will calculate the holding period yield. Holding period yield is for a given period of time. If you analyze it without considering the compounding, that is bond equivalent yield. So it considered 365 days, but it will not consider the compounding. So holding period yield into 365 divided by the given period. For given period for which the holding period yield has been calculated. So it is 4.1667 into 365 divided by 120. So it will be equal to 12.67%. So bond equivalent yield is also an annualized figure. It will use the 365 days convention, but it will not consider the compounding. Next is money market yield. One thing which you should remember that money market is a short term market in which you can borrow less. So money market always uses the 360 days convention and it will not consider the compounding so money market yield is an annualized return of holding period yield but it will not use 365 days convention it all it always uses the 360 days convention so holding period yield into 360 divided by the given period of time for which holding period yield has been calculated so it will be 4.1667 into 360 divided by 120, that is 12.5%. That's how you will calculate the money market yield. Last one is bank discount yield. Whenever there is a word of discount, discount is always from the face value. Discount has no link with the market value or with the initial value. Discount always relate with the Discount word always relate with the face value. So here formula is closing market value mark minus the opening market value. So closing market value will be the face value minus the opening market value divided by the face value. So we can say that face value is the closing market value. So closing market value minus the opening market value divided by the face value. So face value minus opening market value divided by the face value. So if we take the same formula here, if we take the same formula, so par value or face value is 1000. So it will be 1000 minus 960 divided by 1000. 
So instead of dividing at market value, you will be dividing at face value. So that will be bank discount yield. And obviously it will always be an annualized figure. So you will multiply it with 360 over the given time of for which this yield has been calculated that is 120. So it will be 40 divided by 1000 into 360 over 120. So it is 12%. So that's how you will calculate the bank discount yield. So if I write all the yields here, so first of all, we will we have covered holding period yield, equivalent effective annual yield, bond equivalent yield, money market yield, and bank discount yield. Remember, for all the yields, all the four above yields, they have used the convention of initial value divided by opening market value. And bank discount yield has been divided by face value. On the Only the bank discount yield have been divided by the Face value. This is the number one difference. Number two, holding period yield will not be annualized. It is for a given period of time. This is annualized for 365 days, 365 days, and these two are for 360 days. And only one yield has been compounded, that is the effective annual yield. This is simple annualized yield based on 365 days, simple annualized yield based on 360 days. So these are the three differences which you need to remember. Compounding is only an effective annual yield. In bank discount yield, you will divide at the face value, otherwise you will divide at the opening market value. Holding period yield, you will not annualize. Effective annual yield and bond equivalent yield, you will use 365 days money market and bank discount, you will use 360 days convention. Let's solve this example. A $1,000 90-day T-bill is priced with an annualized discount of 1.2%. Annualized discount. Calculate its market price and its annualized add-on yield. Add-on yield, all the yields which have been calculated by considering the opening market value. So here, these are the add-on yields. These are the add-on yields. So let's calculate it. Annualized discount yield is bank discount yield is 1.2 percent. This is for this is annual. So what we have to do? We have to calculate the, for it 90 days. Okay, it will be 1.2 percent. into 90 divided by 360. So it is 0.3%. Face value is 1000. Take its 0.3% value. Three. So the face value discount is three. So the opening market value will be, it must be, 3 less than the face value that is 997. So 997 is the opening market value. Now we want to calculate the add on yield based on 365 days. So the formula is closing market value minus opening market value divided by the opening market value. Add on yield means when you divide with the opening market value into you will calculate, you will analyze it on 365 days basis. If you analyze on 365 days basis, that is bond equivalent yield, otherwise it will be a money market yield. So 3 
divide by 997 into 365 divided by 90. So it will be 1.22 percent. Second example is a $1 million negotiable CD with 120 days to maturity is quoted with an add-on yield of 1.4 percent based on 365 days. Calculate the payment at maturity for this CD and its bond equivalent yield. Bond equivalent yield is the annualized yield based on 365 days basis. So this 1.4 is already on 365 days basis. So that means this is bond equivalent yield. So let's calculate its payment at maturity. So that will be equal to you are doing investment of 1 million now and you will receive 1 plus 0 0.014 into 120 over 365 that will be equal to 1 double zero four six zero three dollar so that's the payment and maturity you are doing this investment now you will get a return of 1.4 percent for 365 days how much you will get in 120 days so that's the maturity value now move to the example number three a bank deposit for 100 days is quoted with an add-on yield of 1.5 percent based on 360 days so let's calculate the bond equivalent yield 1.5 percent have been calculated based on 360 days so analyze it on based on 365 days so it will be equal to 1.5 into 365 divided by 360 that is 1.52083 next is calculation of yield on semi-annual basis okay we have calculated this annualized yield based on if we receive cash to after 100 days so that means how many 100 days in a year 365 over 100 there will be 3.65 times 100 days in a year so this yield has been calculated on a 3.65 times compounding but we need to calculate if we or if we receive cash flows on a semi-annual basis so how to calculate that that is that can easily be calculated using i conversion method so that is second i conversion 1.52083 this is the nominal rate whenever we calculate a yield it is normally a normal nominal yield enter we want to calculate the effective annual rate and if we are receiving cash flow after 100 days so that means we will that that will be compounded 3.65 times in a year 3.65 enter calculate the effective annual rate that is 1.5292 but we do not want to calculate the effective annual rate. We want a yield in which there will be two times compounding in a year. We want to calculate a yield on a semi-annual basis. So keep the effective annual rate same. Now shift the CY over to and calculate the nominal rate. That is 1.5234. So that is the answer 1.52. 3 4 percent that is the yield calculated based on semi annual basis.